Oh, I'm gonna Dana co-host so you can see what all's going on. Um, we live. Hi, everybody. All right. Welcome to What We Know Now Wednesdays, myths, truths, and solutions about hair loss with Dana Wilson, Lori Huckabee, and Tamima Ali, the hair advocates. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello. It seems like forever as usual. (laughs) Please, if you get a chance, um, please share. Um, this broadcast, please share um, with others so that they can enjoy this episode today. Um, if you don't remember, because it's been a while, I'm Dana Wilson. I am a certified trichologist, sister lock master trainer, certified biomedical research assistant, and a certified cold capper. And my passion is really encouraging people that they don't have to suffer in silence if they are experiencing hair loss or some sort of scalp disorder. So I'm here to encourage you that there are advances and therapies out there that can help you. So welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome. Hello everyone, I am Kimra and I am a dermal trichologist and I specialize in wellness and the health of your hair and skin. So let me help you be your most healthy self. Awesome. Hello, everyone. I'm Lori Huckabee. I am a uh, dermal trichologist as well, a licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology instructor, also a uh, biomedical research assistant, and a certified code capper, and a list of other things, too. And (laughs) I am passionate about actually getting the information to you to help you be your most healthy self, um, not just for hair and skin, but overall wellness for your body. So, and together we make up the hair advocates. Yes. And what we do um, is we basically bring awareness to trichology or dermatrichology, right? And then also we want to share with you the um, uh, dispel the myths and mm-hmm. truths about hair loss and scalp disorders. And of course, share the um, therapies that's out there that can help you on your journey. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Today we have a special guest. Special guest. Special guest. A return guest. Yes, she's a return guest. I think Nadia was like on the second show or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're Mm -hmm. all part of an organization called Trichologists on a Mission. And she is the founder of this organization. So we are so happy. She's like a sister to us. So we are so happy to have her. Um, uh, Lori, I think you have her. Uh, do you have her? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I sure do. Um, Nadia Hughes, she's the um, founder of Trichologists on a Mission, also known as Tome. And she's her practice is um, Harrigan, Texas. Um and she's located in San Antonio, Texas. And her practice in holistic healing by assisting clients to uncover the root cause of their hair loss issues. Um, also focusing on cellular regeneration and controlling internal inflammation, achieving life-changing results. And Nadia is also a certified research assistant with the University of Chicago, Illinois, currently holding uh, research in CCCA, a scarring alopecia affecting African American women. Welcome, Ms. Nadia. Welcome. Hey. Nadia, hey, listen. This is it. And look at that. Yes, you have not got your cup of tea. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm hey. so excited. Thank you. 
I am very humble and very happy to be here with you guys. Thank you for inviting me again. <laughs> of course. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you for yep, coming. Said, yep, thank you. We said you'll be back. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Nadia, Nadia, please tell us about the convention first. I'm being yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. But I need to hear about all of right. this. Right. <laughs> So uh, we've been releasing some uh, little pictures here and there. Actually, I have some uh, clips, longer clips of actually the different phases that we went through. Uh, as you know, we always have our uh, all white uh, party mm -hmm. on day one, uh, which we had so much fun. Uh, I got to, you know, introduce uh, the partners and those attendees uh, to the culture of Mexico, pretty much, you know, we had a, a great dance and things like that. Then uh, the following day, we got to enjoy going to the cenotes, uh, swimming in 29 deep feet deep in the water in the dark. Ah. So imagine that part no. that <laughs> we release. I mean, I said we because I release a lot of fears. My fears was always swimming in deep water. Yeah. And not only that, but the cave had bats. So you could not make noise. You could not flash lights. It was like literally dark. The guide was just guiding us with a little light, you know, just to kind of follow him. It was just an amazing experience for all of us. Then the zip line, uh, then we went back to uh, the resort and we went to a Temascal, which is a cellular detox. And it was just amazing. The whole experience was really, really good. And of course, you know, everybody that um, was able to um, uh, do the bioquantum medicine therapy, you know, uh, to be able to have those cells cleanse and detox and renewed uh, definitely was uh, 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 detrimental for them. And they felt totally different. You know, they were able to open their minds and receive the information. Of course, we had a, a holistic dentist that he, a holistic dentist, and he was explaining about how our teeth are crystals. Uh, all my life, I thought it was bones, right? Um, yeah. With a little bit more of, you know, um, some type of enamel or whatever the case is. But no, they're crystals. And then they, he let us know also that we don't have 32 teeth. We have 33 teeth. So 32 in the front and we have one here in the vertebrae. And it was just like the information was different, the connection of, so he was able to let me know what happened my whole life, right? Just by looking at my teeth and uh, he even give us this little apparatus to be able to reset ourselves uh, because everything has, you know, everything has memory pretty much and our cells have memory of whatever we went through when we were kids. So try to reset those cells. It was just amazing. I mean, I, I, we were just blown away with the information. Of course, uh, we had uh, supersonic water, how we are able to utilize the sea water to heal from AIDS, cancer, um, anything, any alignment that we might have, any disease that we might have in the body because we have a lack of vitamin, minerals, and amino acids. Mm -hmm. So um, that was another one. And then um, I presented cellular regeneration, with, which it's, it's kind of something that I've been, you know, in a mission of releasing this information and just yeah. letting us know, first of all, what are we made of? You know, we have to know what are we made of to be able to repair or heal. And um, so, of course, we had uh, the battle of trichologists, which we had a ball <laughs> because we did it kind of like, uh, like if we were in court, right? We were presenting a case. And I will present my case based on that. How would I treat or how would I help this client? And Natalie Salazar will do it on her own terms also. So it was just much fun. A lot of interaction with, uh, with the people that were there. We had so much fun. And of course, it was just a beautiful place to be at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We missed y'all. We missed y'all. I know. <laughs> I right? know. I missed it. I, I so hate that I couldn't go. But yes. listening to you now, I'm like, oh, wow. I knew I was going to miss a lot. But this is, yeah. 
it's extreme. But don't worry, we'll do it. We'll do it. You know, you know, we always got something, you know, right here hiding, you know, for next year. Don't worry. Sit down and just wait for your turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Those of you that don't know, I mean, obviously, we were talking about um, trichologists on the mission. Um, Nadia always have a convention. They try to do it. We try to do it every year. Obviously, with the pandemic, uh, we yeah. lost <laughs> some time. But that's what she's speaking of. The convention you guys were in Me Mexico. So um, yeah, it was just it was just a beautiful experience for all of us. You know. Yeah. Uh, trying to change a little bit more the narrative when it comes to trichology, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, in the information that it gets released because there's so much information that we don't see in the mainstream. Right. And that was my main goal to bring that information, you know, to the front um, and be able to analyze it just to kind of get you, you know, thinking about different stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, share with them. We, we're excited, obviously, to have you here. And today's episode is all about cellular regeneration. So please, please share with us about that. Yeah, so so mainly my goal was to first um, have us as a practitioner's thinking, right, uh, how we can better help the clients. And, you know, as I guide many of the uh, practitioners and trichologists on a mission, we're all in different levels and we help collectively to understand better case, uh, case studies and so on. And since um, TOME members, a uh, few of the TOME members, you guys, that we became research assistants, you know, it's like, I became like a little machine, research machine, and you just wanna read and understand better and find um, the, the information that it's, it's sustainable, right? So I started just by analyzing what is the human uh, made of, right? How we can help this client, why this cells are just dying and you could see so much damage in a person's head, what's going on, right? And of course we understand that everything, uh, the correlation between our hair or areas of our scalp, our head connected to our body, our teeth, um, you know, and, and some of the organs. So analyzing and understand how to replace those damaged uh, or lost cells, how we do that. And we know that um, uh, nutrition here in the United States, it's a big thing, right? It's always about diet or talking about what's best for, for me or for you or for whoever. And everything has been seen kind of like a cookie cutter situation. So I wanted to create something that it could be just specifically for the client. Nothing that has to do with, well, because all these clients, they have CCCA, we're all going to put them on the same protocol. So that was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to analyze a little bit more in depth what was going to be beneficial for their DNA, for their, their cells, pretty much. So once you understand the process of how can I create cellular regeneration, it's just wonderful. And when we started applying those uh, protocols or those uh, steps to those different clients, it didn't really matter the, the type of hair loss they may have or the illness they had or their autoimmunity they had, right? Because we know they tell us that autoimmunity is not reversible, it's not fixable. And when we started seeing this, um, this uh, the clients lose 20 pounds, not of weight, but of inflammation in the body, seeing their hair revive and do what it's supposed to do after you align the body, it's just a beautiful thing. And of course, it's something that I talk about it in my book, The Era of Epigenetics, I had to say it. Of course. <laughs> Because, you know, um, this book has definitely helped many practitioners to understand better what is epigenetics, you know, epigenetics, it can be in a positive or in a negative way. And I always uh, put examples on social media, for instance, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, he was, he has two sons, right? And Arnold, when they separated from the wife, he said once one son stayed behind with him and the other one went to his mom. 
And they took pictures of these kids. They have the same DNA. Uh, you know, they came from the same parents. And, um, and the child that stayed with mom, he's obese, he's overweight. And, you know, you could see he's not healthy and he's thinning. But if you see the other son, he's, he's strong, fit. He likes to exercise. He looks healthy. He has all his hair. So that tells you that our environment that we grow up, right? What we feed the body, what we think, the stuff we see even in TV, because I even tell my clients, it's not only you know a diet change to, to create cellular regeneration, but it's also the stuff we feed the mind. Because mm -hmm. I, yes. I do believe that in psychology, we forget about the nervous system a lot. Because you know, if a person is uh, ha goes in, um, they could have a healthy body, but if they go in a coma, eventually the body will die, right? Because the brain. You say that, Nadia. I had a client come in the other day, and she lost over a hundred pounds. And I said, "What are you doing? What I mean, what did you do? What are you doing?" And she said, "Honestly, obviously, she said I made changes with my diet. Obviously, my lifestyle changed as far as workout." She said, but what really made the difference for me is waking up every morning and having time with God and asking him to help her with the uh, temptation of foods that was not healthy for her and helping her see her body as this beautiful temple and being conscious about what she put and do with it. And she said, really, that was the biggest yeah. change that she needed. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. And that's something that, you know, changing our perception, changing, uh, if we already received the information, we must analyze it and become conscious and say, okay, this no longer do me good. I know when I eat it. And that's how I kind of started going in my change of even myself, mm -hmm. because I ended up getting, you know, ovarian cancer. So that kind of woke me up. I'm out here in trichology telling clients, don't eat this, don't eat that. And I'm overweight, but I didn't know what was going on with me. So, you know, when I find out and know that uh, they tell you this detrimental information, it's like, wow, it hits you like a thousand bricks at one time. You know, I have autistic boys and that was my main concern at the time. And I said, what am I going to do if I'm no longer here? They no longer have their father. I need to start making changes in, in my life. I know what hurts me because I used to eat, for instance, meat. Red meat was the big thing for me. And you get the itis, first of all, right? But I could literally feel a needle, like pin needles going in my, in my ovaries and in my breast. So I knew it was a hormone disruption going on every time I eat it. But my, my taste bud used to love it. So it was kind of like a battle you go through mentally, right? Because sometimes we have depression, sometimes we're, we're stressed or whatever the case is, and we want to reward ourselves with food. But unfortunately, we have to analyze and understand that the food is the information that gets sent to the body at a cellular level letting the body know what to do, right? It's kind of like when you give a child that candy, you know he's gonna be bunting off the walls, right? He's gonna be going crazy. And if you know you're putting that child in bed, you're never gonna give him a candy or a chocolate because you know you will never put him to bed. So that's how we should see food, you know? And at the end of the day, there's so much man-made stuff right now that it looks delicious, it tastes just like real food, but at the same time, the body does not recognize it. So it cannot break it down. It cannot utilize it as a fuel, as an energy, as you know, healing for our uh, organs and so on. Mm -hmm. so, um, so definitely uh, I made it a, a, a mission to impart this information that I was learning and that it was detrimental for me when I was going through my situation. Now I give it to my clients the best I can. And, but again, you know, I don't work with just any client because sometimes clients is like, I don't like vegetables. I don't like water. And water is very important for cellular division. People don't understand that cells live on a gushy jelly type of 
uh, mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. Yes. And if we don't keep it moist and, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't separate, they don't do what it's supposed to do. They don't go through their process. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, you know, sodas, uh, Red Bulls, I mean, all kinds of different drinks or, you know, artificial drinks or sugars or all kinds of stuff that unfortunately is affecting us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So we yes, need to become a little bit more conscious. And people don't understand like some cancer, cancer develops because of a cellular mutation in the division process. So right. once that cell divides and is mutated in any way, shape or form, the other dividing set, like cellular division happens constantly. And in, certain, <laughs> er and in certain areas more often than others. Right. So if you're, if you got a mutated cell that's dividing and it starts rapidly dividing, that's where the cancer comes from, this bad mutation mm -hmm. that just develops and keeps on developing. And, you know, sometimes you can find it yes. out fast and other times it might take a long time for it to get to a point where it's going to impact you in a big way. So cellular regeneration is extremely Jeez. important. Yeah, yeah because... We, we we kill we kill cells you know cells yes. are dying as we speak as we talk as we move as we walk as we sweat uh anything even when we sleep you know their cells coming to the surface of our skin mm -hmm. right and those are going to be eventually washed out and when they're shower and so on but what are we doing to repair or to replace those uh those cells so how and do you that, determine that based on each person? You said it's for each client, right? Not right. That. So how do you determine how each client? So first of all, we have to do a blood chemistry analysis. We don't go nowhere without a blood chemistry analysis because we don't know how they're doing at a cellular level. You know, right. a lot of people, you know, I have a lot of clients that come here and, and the first thing I ask them, um, are you diabetic or you've been told you're diabetic? It's like, oh no, never. I don't eat a lot. Well, that could be a problem too. Mm -hmm. Now, diabetes is not only gain, you know, or uh, gain through just not eat, I mean, eating, but it could be also high stress levels in your body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so trying to understand better how they're doing. And I always say, women lie, men lie, DNA don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to me, you're, you know, the DNA is very important. I know I listen to my client, but majority of the times, 50% they're lying. They don't want to tell you everything or in halfway of the treatment plan, they tell you, oh, by the way, I have lupus. Oh, by the way, I was diagnosed with such and such as like, you want to pass out at the moment. It's like, when were you supposed to tell me this? Mm -hmm. So instead of us as a practitioners relying on the client's uh, information that sometimes, you know, it could, you know, they have a brain fog and they, they don't remember. It's better if we do the blood chemistry analysis from there, we can create a treatment plan based on their needs. Of course, we guide ourselves with uh, um, a blood type diet, which we know um, even that you know, Dr. Crystal Porter, she always says that there's not much research on it. Uh, to us, uh, or at least me, I'm going to speak yes. for me. <laughs> us. You can say us because we yeah. all use that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to speak for, for us, but um, it, it's very detrimental for them. We see the changes. Yes. We see the, the, the shift in the client's face. Uh, I think I show uh, a client that we put them on the, on the a blood type diet, and then we did an epigenetic protocol with her. I mean, it was like 10 years difference. It's yeah. like she rejuvenated a whole 10 years. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could say that was her sister rather than her, you know? Right. So we see the changes and, and we know when a person has high blood pressure, if they take a chip that moment, five minutes later, their blood pressure will shoot up. So if we change our habits today or right now, I start even drinking my, my tea, you know, to help me. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm going to feel different. I'm going to feel mm -hmm. right away. So as faster we apply, you know, a, a better, um, 
way of eating, just removing sodas and, and cookies or bread or things like that, that for instance, me, bread is a big thing, right? <laughs> I'm actually studying bio decoding because I want to analyze why I need that bread. So I find out it's the lack of the father, the father not being there, that I miss my father. So yeah, it could be that because I do miss my father, but you know, not understanding also that many traumas that we have in life have us a certain, you know, we have like habits yep. that we might not had before mm -hmm. or habits that we don't need, but we don't analyze it. When we don't analyze it, then it's still going to be there. It's, we don't, we don't change it. It keeps being in there. So, yeah. I, I think you're making some major points where we're not just treating them, you know, topically in special shampoos. Yes. We're also looking at coaching as well, is what you're talking about. Well, so making sure that um, we we look at the client, the whole client, their mental state. Um, and so helping them that way as well. And then you're also talking about with the cells, like cells need energy. So when you said a client is not eating, well, your cell needs nutrition, nutrients. And so your cells need energy to do what they're supposed to do. Nice. And if they're not going through the natural cell death, then you're going to end up with um, cancer cells. And then they start, you know, rapidly producing. And, and then that, that just leads you down a whole um, avenue where you really don't want to be. And so it's, it's a lot bigger than hair loss at that point, which are making some very major points here. And I hope that all of our trichology family is like, listen, yes. get in this. That it's more than just doing something outside of the person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what we do as trichologists and dermal trichologists is not like people who are really practicing it. Mm -hmm. um, they practice in this way. So like across the water or in Europe or in other parts of the world, um, trichologists are like physicians. It's just yeah. not taught that way over here. But then you have some of us who have really taken that dive and really gone in deep. And so when we say we're paramedical professionals, we really are paramedical professionals. No, we didn't have to go to school for 12 years. Not like we didn't go to Johns Hopkins University. We didn't go to Brown or we didn't go to any of those universities, but the I studies that we, I don't, I was gonna say, but the studies we have done are the equivalent, you know, just like you go to a job interview or something and you may not have the degree, but you have the experience, yeah. that's us. And that's yeah. how, uh, you know, you have trichologists out there. So when, like, don't just dismiss a trichologist over a medical professional. Um, well, what I can tell you this, Lori, what we do different than doctors, not taking nothing away from doctors because right. we do need them. But when we go to a doctor's office, we sit down in front of them, they do blood work and they say, everything is fine, take this pills. But they don't break it down to us, right? They, right. Don't, not, they, don't, they don't break it down, we don't understand. Now, when my clients come in, when I, I have a blood chemistry analysis in front of me, it breaks it down by the oil eleven body systems. So I break it down to them. Listen, this is what's going on in your body system here, here, here. We need to fix this. This is why you're feeling this way. This is why you're having these issues. We make the connection from them and we yes. show them proof because we have it right here for you. You know, so that's the difference. We take, we, we do all the work that doctors don't take because majority of times you go to doctor 15 minutes, that's it, on. You know, we spend hours with the client breaking down the information to make sense to them. And, and, and believe it or not, I love it. I in, really enjoy that bonding that we have yes. with the client. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, listen, I'm going to be your best friend, even though you don't know me from nowhere, but we're going to become best friends. I need you to yes. tell me when you're stressed, what stress you, uh, what's going on. Because even when we have a client in a treatment plan, something can change in the in mid yes. plan. Mm -hmm. We have to tweak that, that treatment plan. So oh, yeah. reality is why? Because maybe something is not functioning. They're not reacting to something. You know, if we haven't been adaptogens, maybe adaptogens are not working for them. And there's some people that love adaptogens, you know? So we have to uh, always have an assessment like, 
uh, like uh, Tamima was saying, we have to coach them. We have to guide them. We have the tools, we have the resources and the knowledge to be able to help you through the, the whole process yes. from start to end. You're not going to walk alone. <laughs> right. A lot of times with clients or with anything in life, if you understand the why something is mm -hmm. happening, mm -hmm. then you're more apt to make the change. But if somebody mm -hmm. just say, this is what's going on and take this pill, that doesn't help me understand why something is happening and what the pill is supposed to do after I stop using it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> What's supposed mm -hmm. to happen then? Mm -hmm. So breaking down the why things are happening is very beneficial to the client. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore mm -hmm. you might find a, a client that's gonna be more compliant. Most definitely, most definitely. And understanding that products alone don't do the job, you know? They have to go hand in hand with something, unfortunately, because the era that we are on, everybody has products, everybody has um, oils and things like that, that unfortunately, it might work for some because maybe they just had a simple fungal infection right. in the scalp, that it right. could be fixed with those products. But that don't mean that applies to everyone that is suffering from hair loss because we have a lot of different type of hair loss, a lot of type of different uh, disorders and not considering the underlying issues of the individual, yeah. you know, so definitely um, for us as a holistic practitioners, uh, the trademark that, that we created for trichologists on a mission, we created a cellular food that can feed the cells uh, because there's a lot of malnourishment here in the United States, you know, and we see that when we deliver those 97 vitamins, minerals, and amino acids, and we're also helping the liver to detox because majority, 97% of America has a fatty liver. Um, when we help detox the liver constantly, you have a better functioning of the body, a better, you know, alertness, you know, more energy uh, and so on. So definitely we see the benefits of cellular food, that that's what the body needs at the end of the day. You know, we have a lot of peaky clients like, oh, I don't like this or I don't like that. Or, you know, if you were not trained when you were a child to drink water and things like that, it's very difficult to make a shift on the client. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, uh. <laughs> Yeah. It's difficult to work with a client like that, but uh, but if you want to recover, most definitely you have to follow the steps all yeah. the way. I have a question, Nadia. I'm just thinking about when you say in the United States, um, the malnourishment. Stuff. What's the difference between what you see with your clients in Mexico versus... In Mexico, you know, we're so used to, first of all, here, vegetables, even the simple vegetables that are not organic here are very expensive. In Mexico, it's cents. I mean, you could feed a feast uh, to a whole family, you know. Of course, they add a little bit of protein in there to make a big meal. But I remember um, my mother cooking a lot with a lot of, um, a lot of vegetables, you know, full, wholesome foods, you know, beans. Uh, rice or uh, broccoli or, you know, any type of vegetables. And even the drinks that we had to drink, it was lemonade, fresh squeezed lemonade. Mm -hmm. You know, we never had um, sodas. Well, we couldn't afford it, first of all, you know. So my mother was very um, careful of the stuff she used to feed us. But a lot of families, that's what they, they, they do. But now here in the United States, we have all this fast foods. Now we're seeing fast foods in Mexico and other countries. And unfortunately, now we're getting more people to become more you know, obese or having problems. The same thing, because it doesn't have no nutritional factors in there. So, uh, so we lose a little bit of what we were taught when we were a child, right? Um, for instance, for me, you know, when I came to the United States, I didn't notice that I started gaining weight, gaining weight, gaining weight when I was not that big, <laughs> you know, but it's, of course, the food, what you have accessibility to, and there's not many healthy places, like where do you see a vegetable uh, vegetarian restaurant they're just barely starting to kind of pick up but you have to drive across the the city to be able to find a restaurant 
you know, so uh, even vegan restaurant, I have a lot of clients that come here and they're like, oh, I'm vegan, I'm healthy. No, ma'am, <laughs> the fact that you're vegan don't mean that you're healthy. It just means that right. you don't consume animal product. So, right. but you will do and not in them. And people don't realize that not everybody can be a vegan. Not everybody can be a vegan or a vegetarian. Your body just needs, it has to have the animal yeah. protein. No matter what you say, your body needs it to, it needs it to be its optimal right. self. So not everybody can be a vegan or vegetarian. And that's why we kind of like the blood type diet because it, it, points you in the right direction sure. now you have some unicorns out there but just like you can't see them you can't see them <laughs> so not everybody's gonna be a unicorn right so you have to some people have to have that meat and no matter how hard they try those are going to be your people who are unhealthy because they don't have it in there you know they're not getting it I, I was, i'm trying to get the distinction though um nadia um with what you see in Mexico versus United States. So in your experience with the clients here in the United States, you're um, redirecting their mind in regards to their diet. And then in Mexico, what are the common things there? That so here, here I see a lot of canned food. In Mexico, canned food. Canned food. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, canned food. So for instance, if they're going to cook a, a vegetable at home, like the typical American, They'll open a couple of cans, warm it up, or okay. put butter and give it to the child. Okay. In Mexico, we don't have that. You know, well, we do have cans now, but reality is that it was only made for like rich people or people that had the money to just open the, the can and put it in there. Pretty much everything is fresh. The, in communities, when you go to hardworking, you know, or working class communities in Mexico, you go to the market, to the farmer's market every Tuesday or Monday, depending when they come to your neighborhood and go buy all the vegetables that you need for the house for the week, you know? Well, and then if you- If food is not the issue there, what is? I guess that's what I'm trying if So, So there is, there could be a lot of factors. We have to understand the environmental. So I always, say that men are very macho, you know, they think they, 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 um, they run stuff at home. So that could be another thing for us as women, you know, control, you know, not be able to do what you want to do as, as a woman or go to work just like everybody else in Mexico. It's like you stay home and work and, you know, kind of like, uh, because you're the mother of the house and you've got to stay there and take care of the kids, you know, now more and more women are becoming more free and, you know, go and, and work and so on. But of course there's, you know, stressors, uh, environment, depending the job that you have. So it goes by, you know, by, by now analyzing the communities and so on. Right. Right. Most definitely. I just wondered mm -hmm. that because I mean obviously um diet is a huge factor. Yeah, it's more raw foods, uh definitely. Uh but then you know in Mexico you they abuse a lot like the, the meats, the pork, the red meats and things like that. So they don't focus so much on what is um uh you know is this healthy for me or this goes with my dna no so um it's different right um but one thing that um that i wanted to make a comment about it was that there is a test that i always recommend my clients right if they have the funds to be able to run it it's a day two test in the day two test they um they compare you against ten thousand different foods and they give you specifically what your what your um, your DNA can thrive on, right? So, for instance, you like nuts, right, and seeds. So, if you like peanuts, they and peanuts are not good for you, they're gonna tell you, okay, so start taking walnuts because walnuts you have it's more um, uh, beneficial for you, kind of like what we see in the in the in the blood type diet you know, these are more beneficial for you, but it's more custom made to your DNA because right now we have so much autoimmunity going on. So autoimmunity comes from the gut. 
you know, we have to definitely focus on the gut, fixing the gut. Uh, there's a lot of people with parasites, you know, H. pylori is being becoming a big trend, uh, you know, not only in adults, but in children, you know, so that is really um, uh, something to think about because it that on, not only affects the gut, but it affects the kidney, the liver, the liver, first of all, and then from the liver goes through the bloodstream and then it stores in the, in the brain, it stores in everywhere, anywhere it goes, even in, in our muscles. Sometimes we can have, huh? What did you call the test? Um, it's a day two test. Okay. Day two. Day two. So you go on day2.com and you can find that information there. It runs you like four or five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's it's a really good and also keeps you away from you know becoming diabetic or if you're diabetic already, it will bring you to uh, to healthy numbers. You know that you don't have to worry about you know having this crazy high numbers and you know end up in the hospital in a coma. Or, or too low, because too low also can cause a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All of that is a good, that's a whole mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. You know, we think that always excessive a lot is bad, but also nothing, you know, or little, it could be bad. So we have to definitely be balanced, you know, uh, not too much, but not too little, just enough. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. We also, that we also know that um, uh, just because a person is thick or big doesn't mean that they're well nourished. They can they can have malnutrition too. Most of your big folks are malnourished because just and it's not so much that they even eat a lot. It's just that their body <laughs> it just can't metabolize what they're eating. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just, you know, that weight is stored, like Nadia said, is stored inflammation, is stored fat, is it's a lot of stored toxins that'll make a person big too. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, you know, and thinking about, you know, poor blood circulation, because we always focus on hair loss, hair loss, hair loss. So I get, you know, practitioners send me pictures and I could see right away when a person has diabetes or yes. they have very high uh, glycemic numbers in their blood. And um, they're like, uh, what do you think about this person? Uh, they're diabetic mm -hmm. and usually high uh, glycemic numbers is going to ferment blood, preventing oxygenation, you know, <laughs> preventing nutrition, anything yep. coming to the surface. You know, so they must change their diet. You know, you got to turn them into bunnies. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, that's, that's key right there. And even in the book, you know, I give a very specific protocol that I'm going to share with you guys real quick. Y'all better feel, listen up. You listen, better don't. listen up. Mm -hmm. Don't feel special, okay? Don't feel special. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm joking, I'm joking. So there is seven pillars to optimal health, uh, bottom line, right? And there is a process that the body goes through cellular regeneration, what we call. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so always pay attention uh, how the body metabolites, you know, because at the end of the day, it needs to go through that process to be able to, to uh, go through, get rid of waste, uh, absorb, you know, the good stuff, let go of the bad stuff and so on. So the first one is DNA methylation, you know, creating methylation. And that happens when we eat green leafy foods, all the green leafy foods that contain the B vitamins, that simple. So pay attention. Now, number two, body inflammation. We have to control our inflammation in the body. A lot of people tend to have strokes or heart attacks from high inflammation in the body that they didn't even know they had. Mm -hmm. Number three, uh, oxidative stress. We know that oxidative stress is what makes us old. We start getting stiff, our bones getting old, 
heart and tired. So, um, so a lot of antioxidants for the body are key uh, to be able to um, have that, 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 that right oxidative stress in our body just to have it under control. Now we have body detoxification. We know uh, cellular detoxification, it's a must and it goes through phases, but it's important that we're able to execrete all those toxins in the gut and the lymph, um, you know, everything, it has to be flushed away. Uh, good blood circulation, that's how you're gonna be able to have good circulation. Immunity, we have to work the gut where in the microbiome that everything happens, that's where everything flourish and uh, either can go good or bad. So I see a lot of people with um, IBS, uh, Alzheimer's, you know, all these issues that it could be fixed just by fixing the gut, you know, the bacteria in the gut and stop feeding the wrong bacteria. Right. Uh, lipid metabolism, you know, we have to eat the right fatty foods. We tend to eat a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, fry food or vegetable oils or canola oil or all those nasty oils that they're selling us at the uh, grocery store. But there's healthy uh, fatty foods that we can we can intake, grilled oils or, or omegas, you know, good stuff that it can be replenishing the body and the cells could start doing their function. Same thing with mineral metabolism. We know that there is, the minerals have to be um, uh, at par because those are the ones that help the vitamins absorb in the body. So if our minerals are not um, are, are at par, you know, in our body that they are, you know, up all the minerals. We have 118. We're, uh, um, what are they called? The table of content, the, the mineral table of content, 118 in the body. And we usually focus on five to 10 different ones. And right. we overdose on those, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So we must focus on all this. So those are the seven uh, pillars to optimal health. If we focus on those, I promise you, we're going to be doing good. We're going to be doing mm -hmm. good and our hair is going to flourish and do what it's supposed to do most definitely. Right. Yeah. Nadia, um, can you speak more to the inflammation? Yes. So inflammation, it's a process that we must have, right? It's something that uh, it repairs. For instance, if I cut myself right, right now, we're going to see some reddening going on. So the body's like, hey, hello, you know, she just got a cut. Let's go to the area and repair. So in a couple of days, we see a little scab. And that is important to have in the body. The problem is when it becomes uh, acute, you know, like a, 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 a long term, right. you know, inflammation that it hasn't been taken care of. For instance, a person that's diabetic, right? We see a person, they have those, um, uh, what they call diabetic foot, right? Mm -hmm. It's been there for a long time. I seen a gentleman that he was a barber um, and he could never heal properly because his pants will be rubbing against that, that wound. And, and he was going to doctors to get, you know, washes, scrapes and all kinds of antibiotics and all this stuff but it wasn't healing, you know? So that type of inflammation is not the inflammation we want, right? Mm -hmm. So we definitely, there's uh, also a protocol to fix those issues. So, um, so inflammation is, it, it could be good and it could be bad at the same time. That's why we have to always have it under control. And for this omegas, Omega-3 is very detrimental for us, you know, to be able to help us uh, maintain an, um, a healthy uh, inflammation response in the body. Mm -hmm. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. <laughs> no, <laughs> but she's not muted. So I don't know. What what happened? Happened? Okay, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Well, Oh, you're back. We can okay. hear you now. I said, no, thank you for that. Because, um, you know, <laughs> inflammation is huge, 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 huge. 
huge. Yeah, we and we can feed it. We can feed bad inflammation just by ingesting certain yes. foods right. like cheese, milk, uh, yeast, sugar. You know those things right. feed the feed the 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 bad inflammation in our body. You know. Right. So antioxidants are very important. Like I said, you know, uh, omegas, you know, there's different omegas um, that it can help us. Uh, olive oil, it's really good to have. Uh, grapeseed oil is really good to ingest also uh, to help with inflammation levels. So, uh, and then of course, meditation, exercising, uh, those are also part of uh, controlling our inflammation because when we're high in stress, the higher the stress is, the higher the cortisol levels are, you know, majority of the time, the higher the, the, the inflammation levels are in the body. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, and also that, also that uh, micro, the micro circulation plays a huge part because you, you get, everybody has, um, yeah, we're not talking about just the circulation with your veins and arteries, but also the micro artery, micro vessels that's in your body, like the capillaries and arterioles and venules and things. Those, if those get backed up, it just, yeah. it's just going to cause a barrage of problems and build up more inflammation in the body because if blood, if the blood traveling and circulating it generates energy and it also detoxifies. So if you have poor circulation, that means you have a backup of toxins because you got cells that's dying off and can't get released through the waste process like it's supposed to. So that's a huge part of inflammation is that poor circulation that we talked about. Yes, Perfect. most definitely. Um, Nadia, we always ask our guests before they leave and before we conclude, what do you know now about hair loss or um, scalp disorders or even hair growth? What do you know now? I know now that the body can heal. Mm -hmm. I know now we have the capability of heal naturally when we stop putting toxins in the body, when we stop doing uh, the stuff that God didn't put there for us. <laughs> so that's what I know now. And, uh, and we, we, we now utilizing this information to help many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. I appreciate you join of, uh, joining us. Uh, we so Thank appreciate you. your, your passion around this. And obviously, I mean, as a practitioner and then also as the founder of Trichologists on the Mission, uh, we appreciate you putting us out there for the world to know who we are. Yes, and, um, thank you. Yeah, we, we so appreciate that. Thank you, thank you for, for inviting me. Thank you for, uh, of course, the mission that you guys individually have. It's just a beautiful thing to see you guys how, you are developing like this amazing people, you know, that uh, that definitely you guys are like a gem that is hidden, you know, those, those, uh, the <laughs> so a diamond in a rock. definitely a to find you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to scratch the surface that way you can, they can see your shine, but yeah, definitely. Polished. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the for the commitment that you guys have to your community, uh, to those you know looking for answers. Most definitely, uh, thank you. I appreciate you guys. I love y'all. We can't wait. I love you too. Anybody got any questions? Did anybody okay, have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. People, do we have people on the Zoom? No, but we have people on Facebook. Let's see if we get any questions from them. Oh, yeah. Anybody got any questions? We got a lot of hearts. Of course, yeah. you have a yeah. budget question. I'll mm -hmm. take the hearts. <laughs> we got a lot of hearts. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, we got. Now, we got wait a minute. Heart. Can you give That's us some um, top secret information and tell us where you're thinking about uh, doing the convention next? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Can we get exclusive? 
Can you guys let my inflammation levels come down? <laughs> 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 Listen, it's it's stressful. Let me tell you, it was a beautiful thing, but you know, it, it could be mm. stressful times. Mm -hmm. You know, my sister Lori, Lori, you won't let me lie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but believe it or not, you know, we create the events with with much love and thinking about you know uh, doing something different for us as a practitioners to celebrate us the commitment that we have for our community, first of all. So mm -hmm. believe me, once I know, I'll release it to you guys. Y'all be the first ones to know. <laughs> we, have to, we have to have you back and do a drum roll. <laughs> I know, yeah, you'll make your big announcement. <laughs> yes, announce it on what we know now. Yes, yes most absolutely. definitely, we will, we will. That's a good idea. Yes, hopefully you guys will be there with us next year. Um, definitely we have a lot of, uh, projects that we got going on and we're going to need a lot of, a lot. Uh, a lot of your help guys. Are you talking about in regards yeah. to research, um, projects? Actually, it's something different than research. Uh, I have something, you know, hit right here. I got you. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm definitely going to contact <laughs> you guys because we need, we need hands. We're going to need a lot of hands. Definitely. Look at it. <laughs> well, thank you again. And thank you everybody for joining us. I yes. think next, um, next, you have something, Kimmy? I do. I just want to address someone's question that they put in here. Um, the person said they were late, but um, they did hear us speak about, I believe she's talking about grape seed. Grape seed. Grape okay. seed. She said, but her hair is gray and it turns her hair yellow. What to do? No, no, no. But I didn't say grape seed, put it on the scalp. Right. No. I said no. ingesting it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if a lot, a lot of about oils. We don't. I don't really believe in applying directly oils because first we have the job of cleansing and removing all the years mm -hmm. of putting stuff right. So reality, this is what that it has to come stuff from the inside. So reality, it's ingesting it, absorbing it to the body, and then it's able to do what it's supposed to do. Right. And a lot of the, a lot, I know it's all over social media, on different platforms and things, you'll see people, you know, cutting up foods and fruits and all of that, rubbing it on the, yeah, <laughs> no, eat the food, Yeah. eat it, like eat consume it. Don't, you don't yeah. put it on. Trust me, your biggest benefit is going to come from ingesting it, not putting it on. Come on now. They're putting foods right. on what's already dead. You want to grow hair. So yeah, like this, this it. right here, this is dead. Yeah. This is, this is <laughs> dead. What you're trying to do is like, it's, it's, it's only like it is because it's still connected to the inside where the life is. The life is within yeah. not on the outside yeah. Yeah. so all you're doing to the outside hair is coating it mm -hmm. with silicones and things to make it appear you know a certain feel way, or feel a and, certain way. Yeah. and styling and styling products to make it feel a certain way but healthy hair in and of itself you don't need to use you don't have to use a whole lot of products. It just has its own natural sheen mm -hmm. to it. It has, it's going to be life. It's going to have a bounce to it. It'll have movement to it. You don't have to use a whole lot of anything. Yeah. When, it will when be you're, bouncing. It will, bouncing and, it will be bouncing yes. and behaving. Yes. <laughs> like this. You know, the natural flow, <laughs> the natural flow it's supposed to be. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Thank you and, and even Thank the you. scene, you, you'll hear people, <laughs> bye. <laughs> no, I was just going to say to our audience, next month, we're going to have, cold, we'll, oh, we'll, yeah. um, we'll have a, I think we'll have a return guest as well about cold capping. Um, yeah. yeah, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about cold capping. Um, we've done, we, you know, we've been doing cold capping and we can't wait to tell you about the experience wow. and the other benefit that's yeah. out there for people going through uh chemotherapy and radiation treatments is awesome. awesome yeah awesome so, 
And make sure you share this one. This one right here is what you should be sharing. <laughs> yes. Share it. We're going to share it. We're going to share it everywhere in a minute. Once I get off. That's right. Oh, well, all of our audience, our audience members, yes. like, I want them to share it to their friends and their family. Share yes. this video. Don't be stingy about it. Don't keep no. this to yourself. No, this let me tell crazy. you. Yeah. We're going to be in we're gonna be in tour very soon. Yes. So if you want to have a space in that tour and you want to come and see us, guess what? You gotta share us. You gotta sh you gotta share the wealth. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes. Cool. yes. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you, you, Nadia. Thank, Thank, Thank you, you so Nadia. much. Get Nadia's information to get in contact with her, please, please. Yes. Love take you, a picture. You. Take a picture of this right here. Love you guys. Love you Love too. Me too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. We didn't have our music. What happened? Oh. There it is. Tune in next week. Same time, same place. See you next month, you guys.